Welcome in everybody, it's Gene. I've got a video component now for better or worse so you can see me while I'm talking to you. And I wanted to do a little bit of analysis today about the PC-12 accident that happened a couple of weeks ago, July 26th, 2024, November 357 Hotel Echo. And this is the accident aircraft here. It's a 2010 PC-12 NG flown by a single private pilot, six passengers, and let's head over to the Aviation Safety Network page <clears throat> about the accident. And unfortunately, all seven occupants were killed in the crash. The aircraft was destroyed north of Gillette, Wyoming during the en route phase at uh, flight level 260 two, is where the accident sequence started. And we have a quick narrative here. <clears throat> Looks like the aircraft stopped for fuel in Nebraska City, AFK and was en route to Billings, uh, Billings, Montana, BIL. And I've actually flown in this part of the country quite a bit. <clears throat> there was a cold front at the time. This is the satellite imagery of the, uh, of the area. Gillette is right here. And you can see all of this cloud cover along <clears throat> a, uh, a cold front that was coming through the area. There is some convective activity in the area, some thunderstorms, especially down to the south near Denver and Cheyenne. You can see some rough looking cauliflower accumuliform clouds west of Rapid City out here, northwest Nebraska. It's tough to see under this higher layer of cirrus clouds uh, where the accident occurred, but presumably there was some precipitation in the area, uh, almost certainly some turbulence, maybe a little bit of icing. So there was a little bit of adverse weather in the area. I think the METARs at the time, if I scroll down here, near the airport or near where the crash occurred actually not the airport but the airports close to the crash site weren't really reporting anything adverse it was good vfr with light wind but you can see some scattered clouds and we know there were some showers around so um again quick narrative uh pc 1247e so again that is an ng was destroyed when it crashed north of gillette wyoming the pilot and six passengers perished in the accident Unconfirmed reports suggest the aircraft was flying at flight level 260 when the pilot reported they were losing control. The airplane was seen in a dive with an average rate of about 30,000 feet per minute towards the end of the recorded data, which is just an incredible rate of descent. Um, and the uh, crash sparked a wildfire. So um, we don't know a lot yet. And there could have been a number of factors involved. Icing could have been a factor, although I doubt it. At flight level 260, you don't typically get a lot of ice. If there were some thunderstorms around, <clears throat> uh, that can lead to some higher altitude icing, but it, I, I doubt that icing was a significant factor in the crash. Um, but I do want to make the point of saying that we don't know a lot yet, and we don't really want to speculate a whole lot, although we can make a pretty well-educated guess as to what occurred and hopefully take some lessons from it. So anytime we talk about accidents, I just really want to you know, be respectful. Um, these were <clears throat> husbands, wives, moms, dads, kids, family members, and uh, we don't want to speculate too much, but we can hopefully learn some lessons so that uh, we can um, we can make flying a little bit safer. So uh, let me pull up the flight aware track and zoom out. So this was the actual the actual track of the aircraft that day, and you can see they took off from Southeast Nebraska AFK and they were in route. Um, it looks like they were at flight level 240 at first, as you can see, and then once they got a little bit closer to this line of weather here, they climbed up to right there to flight level 260. So my guess is that uh, they were getting into some turbulence at 240 and they wanted to try a different altitude, so the pilot elected to climb to 260 and stayed there until the loss of control happened not too long later right there and then there was a series of descending turns and uh, just an outright loss of control. We don't know if it was an in-flight breakup although I'm guessing structural failure was probably um, probably did occur and the reason for that is if you scroll down here and you look at this ADSB data you can see that the last um, last bit of recorded data was just below 20,000 feet. So if, a, if an in-flight breakup did occur, it probably happened right around that altitude. So here's the, uh, <clears throat> the last couple of turns that were made by the aircraft. You can see they were probably in a pretty steep spiral here. And again, just guessing, but probably what happened based on the ATC report that the, the pilot did report losing the autopilot or having trouble with the autopilot 
My guess is that they flew into an area of moderate or greater turbulence right around this weather here and uh, right around Gillette here and the autopilot disconnected. Now the autopilot does have G limits and it's sensing acceleration movement and if it, it exceeds a certain parameter the autopilot will disconnect and uh, the autopilot says hey Ace you flew us into this mess you fly us out of it. So you've got to be ready to take over the aircraft and hand fly out of a condition like that. It does happen. I in fact was just flying a couple of weeks ago uh, in a mountainous area in Oregon and um, had the autopilot disconnect uh, kind of out of nowhere. I just hit a, one big bump on the uh, on the leeward side of a mountain and got the disconnect. So you do have to be ready to kind of jump in and uh, just because the autopilot is flying the aircraft doesn't mean that um, you're not going to be flying the aircraft really soon. The autopilot can fail, it can give up on you, so you need to be ready to, to get in there and hand fly uh, really any time. So my guess is if they flew into this area of weather, the autopilot disconnected and the pilot uh, just simply lost control of the aircraft and became spatially disoriented and then pulled the airplane apart, unfortunately. So um, <clears throat> if we back this up a little bit, you can see right here, they actually climbed for a second up to 263. So I'm guessing the autopilot disconnected, the pilot started to hand fly the airplane, um, you know, kind of kept it under control for a couple of minutes, started having a hard time, entered this right-hand turn, um, lost some altitude, and just, again, probably became increasingly spatially disoriented to where he just lost control and pulled the airplane apart. So a um, couple of lessons that we can learn from this. First of all, this was a private pilot. He was airplane single engine land, airplane multi-engine land, and instrument rated. The PC-12 is a lot of airplane for a private pilot. Uh, now, I don't know what his total time was or his time and type or, you know, where he trained, when he last trained. I don't know any of that information. So, but I do know he was a private pilot based on the FAA data. And um, again, that's a lot of airplane for a private pilot. So if you're, if you're flying any airplane, doesn't matter what it is, you need to have personal limitations. Uh, in flying, they're called personal minimums. I think limitations is a better term because in some cases like this, you might, you know, might not have anything to do with ceiling and visibility. You might just not be comfortable flying into areas of thunderstorms and so forth uh, without an instructor or a more experienced mentor pilot with you, which I think was probably the case in this accident. So um, personal limitations are huge, especially for the less experienced pilots or just a pilot that has low time and type. You know, if you're not comfortable in an airplane yet, you could have 30,000 hours. If you're, you know, if you've only got 30 hours in the PC-12, uh, you still might not be comfortable flying that airplane into, you know, IFR conditions or low, you know, low ceilings, low visibility, thunderstorms, that kind of thing. So um, having good limitations, making sure you adhere to those things, get a really good weather briefing on the ground before you take off. And if there's something you're not completely comfortable with that you don't think that you could uh, definitely manage safely, then you don't want to fly in that area. You want to make a plan B. You either want to route around the weather, you want to wait, you want to stop short of the weather <clears throat> and let it pass, but you don't, want to, you don't want to exceed your own personal limitations lest you exceed the airplane's limitations, and uh, which, you know, again, I think is what happened here. So <clears throat> if the autopilot does kick off, you've got to be ready to hand fly the airplane, and a good rule of thumb is just to always ask yourself, would I hand fly the airplane in this situation? Would I hand fly the airplane uh, on an ILS approach to 200 feet? Would I hand fly the airplane, you know, in, in this case at high altitude through an area of uh, showers or thunderstorms? If, if you don't feel comfortable hand flying the airplane in that situation, you really ought not fly there because again, the autopilot can disconnect uh, or, it can, or it can malfunction. So you need to be ready to take over. Now, if you do end up in a situation where the autopilot gives up on you, and you end up um, spatially disoriented, which means you don't know which way is up. I think we do a little bit of a disservice to pilots in the community by overcomplicating the issue. We do the unusual attitude recovery training and things, and that's good. But this really isn't that complicated. They're, they're, the biggest no-no is to pull back on the yoke if you are spatially disoriented because you can pull the airplane apart if you exceed the limit load factor of the airplane. If you're in a steep spiral, it's called a graveyard spiral, and you have a feeling of, of, of acceleration, 
the instinct might be to pull back on the yoke. That increases the load factor on the airplane and you can start to bend and break things. So if you find yourself in over your head and you've lost control of the airplane, you're spatially disoriented, the best thing you can do is level the wings. So in the NG, you don't have to worry about gyros tumbling or anything like that. So if you just look at the attitude indicator and just simply level the wings, consciously do not apply any fore or aft force to the yoke itself, just level the wings. The pitch, if you have enough altitude, and in this case they did, they were up at 26,000 feet, will uh, oscillate, but it will eventually re-stabilize. The airplane is stable. So level the wings, <clears throat> don't worry about the pitch, let the airplane settle out, um, you know, get your, kind of get your head back in the game and get, get the airplane under control and go from there. Uh, in some cases, the best thing you can do if you have enough altitude is just let go of the yoke. Um, if you really are completely turned around, you don't know, you know which way is up, let go of the yoke. Again, the airplane is probably gonna do a better job of sorting itself out than you will if you're completely disoriented. So, um, unfortunately in this case, I think probably the pilot was just, again, in that steep spiral, that last one there that we saw in the ADSB data, this right-hand turn, and probably just pulled the airplane apart. And then the last point I wanna make about this accident is um, the single pilot aspect of flying the PC-12. Single pilot sometimes comes under fire. People think that maybe it's not safe. Uh, that is just completely untrue. Now, we have to put a caveat on this because of course it does depend on, on the pilot. It depends on the pilot's experience level, uh, both overall and also uh, in type. So you do have to, you know, you have to be well-trained and experienced in the PC-12 to fly it safely single pilot. But if you, uh, if you are well-trained and experienced in the aircraft, it is truly a single pilot airplane. The airplane can be flown very safely with a single pilot. Um, and in fact, I would argue it can be flown safer single pilot than in some cases with two pilots if the pilots are not well trained and adhering to SOPs. Uh, it can be actually more of a distraction to have a second pilot in that cockpit with you than it can be a help. And I can speak to this from my own experience flying the airplane over the years, both mostly single pilot and also occasionally with the crew. Um, oftentimes that second pilot is more of a distraction than they are uh, of assistance to you and that's just a function of the fact that these airplanes are flown by operators that typically don't have robust training programs um, if you you know in some cases uh, I think people are expecting you know CRM at the airline level that's not what you're gonna find in an aircraft like the PC-12 uh, the training simply isn't normally conducted that way these operators sometimes don't even have SOPs if they do have SOPs, they're not necessarily adhered to or everyone kind of does it a little differently when you get in the airplane. You know, this guy likes to do his flow this way. This guy likes to do that flow. This guy uses his own checklist and so on and so forth. So you get a lot of variability and what that ends up leading to is a lot of uncertainty about clearly defined roles. Uh, it can lead to miscommunications, distractions, and we all know how to, you know, deadly distractions can be in airplanes. So. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in single pilot so long as the pilot is well trained and experienced in type. Uh, and again, nothing against having a second pilot in the airplane. And, and I, I'll also grant the point that if both pilots are well trained and proficient and there are good SOPs that are laid out and adhered to in the airplane, that it is just as safe or maybe even in some cases safer to have two pilots in the airplane. But that's just not normally what happens in the real world and the uh, in the, in the PC-12. Um, it's just simply not flown like an airline jet would be. So anyway, nothing wrong with single pilot. Don't be scared of the single pilot thing. Um, it all comes down to training and experience. And hopefully you learned something from that, guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. And I will also be, uh, I think, hosting a PC-12 boot camp. We're gonna do some PC-12 systems training pretty soon. So I'm gonna get that together and have some dates um, coming out soon. So if you're interested in that, um, hang tight. I'll have, uh, I'll have an announcement coming out soon for that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.